it's a it's a powerful state and when it's overcome by paranoia and uh, uh, irrationality and hysteria there could be real dangers I wanted to ask a question about a totally different area, which is on our, the, the, environment, the environment, because of the, not only the oil that is leaking from the British Petroleum explosion, but the methane that is being released, and the methane is the worst heat trapping gas that there is. Do you think that people are going to start to wake up to how fragile our planet is and that we can't sustain wars. In, in Pakistan last week, they had the highest temperatures they've ever had, 128 degrees, you know. So it, do you think this is going to, there'll be something good coming out of it? Last year, as you probably read, was the warmest year on record. Uh, the, what's going on in the Gulf is horrible enough. But it's worth noting a real racist element in our concern about that. I mean, it's, it's a fraction of what's happened in the Niger Delta, for example, where the huge oil spills going on all the time, uh, causing enormous damage, killing all sorts of people. But, you know, that's black Africa, so who cares? I mean, it's not as serious as the uh, uh, oil spills in uh, the Amazon by Texaco now, Chevron. Uh, so it's bad enough, but that's what we do all over the place and nobody pays any attention. This time it's us, so you know, it becomes a big issue. Yeah, it's bad. And today, uh, Obama announced uh, uh, more uh, oil drilling. Uh, it's going to renew oil drilling. Uh, so uh, the methane is no joke, you're quite right. Uh, as uh, as uh, the permafrost melts in Siberia and other places. It's going to, it's, the predictions are it's going to release a huge amount of tra trapped methane, which you're correct, is much more dangerous than carbon dioxide. Uh, so, and a lot of other, you know, I mean, th these are kind of what are called, what are called non-linear events, you know, that you can have a sudden spurt uh, after things go, continue slowly in a certain direction. Uh, will anything be done about it? Well, it's, it's kind of, I mean, we're facing the question of species survival in this case. It's kind of like nuclear weapons. But unfortunately, there are institutional factors that make it very hard to do anything. I mean, it's not that there are sort of bad people in control. Uh, the people who are making the decisions are trapped by institutional structures. So, for example, there's, take, I mean, the major power center in the country, unquestionably, is the corporate sector. But if you're the CEO of a corporation, you don't have a lot of choices. You have to act so as to increase short-term profit or else you're out. If you don't do that, first of all, it's, re it's, it's, it's required by Anglo-American law. So if you don't do it, it's illegal. But even apart from that, if you don't do it, you're kicked out and somebody comes in and does do it. Now that's the nature of the system, you know, the semi-competitive system. Now, uh, major corporations uh, and, and business associations like the Chamber of Commerce and so on, American Petroleum Institute, they've been carrying out large-scale campaigns in the last couple of years to try to convince the public that global warming is a liberal hoax. Okay, and it's succeeding. By now, the proportion of the public who thinks that, who believes in anthropogenic global warming, you know, human contributions to global warming, is barely over a third. It's declined sharply. So the propaganda campaigns have been succeeding. Well, you know, the CEOs who are carrying out those campaigns understand as well as you do that this is no liberal hoax, uh, that it's going to destroy what they own and uh, destroy the lives for their grandchildren. They know that as human beings, but in their institutional role as CEOs, they have to dismiss this as what's called an externality in economic theory. 
as something you put aside because it doesn't have to do with uh, making the best market transactions. Well, in this case, the uh, externality happens to be the fate of the species, but it's still an institutional requirement. But to overcome that is no small task. That means really reconstructing institutional structures in a large-scale way. And the limited market, it's a very limited market that we have, uh, kind of compels uh, those uh, uh, highly destructive decisions. I mean, it's the same in financial markets. So uh, the, 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 this is what's called systemic risk. You know, if Goldman Sachs say, make some transaction, uh, if they're following, playing the rule, the game by the rules, then they have to, or else you know their guys are out. Uh, they ignore, they they tr they carry out a transaction in such a way that it benefits them, and if it's a risk, they you know insure themselves against that risk. But they don't consider the effect on the rest of the uh, financial system, what's called systemic risk. That's an externality. They ignore it, and it's built into the system that they must ignore it even though it's understood that this is, you know, brings about repeated financial crises, worse and worse. Uh, of course, that can be overcome by uh, government regulation. From the Depression until the 1970s, when deregulation started and financialization of the economy began, during that whole period, there were no financial crises uh, because the regulatory structure of the New Deal was sufficient to constrain it, uh, plus the whole way the financial system was organized. But since the 70s, there have been repeated crises getting worse and worse. Uh, we're likely, to, we're probably building up for the next one right now. Uh, and uh, again, this externality is not accounted for. Well, in the case of systemic risk, there's at least an answer. Uh, the government can regulate sufficiently to overcome this uh, serious market defect. In the case of uh, uh, the environment, nobody's going to do it unless God steps in. There's no one to control the externalities, uh, the fate of the species. But that's what we're faced with. So it takes real work to try to do something about this. And how much time there is, we don't know. I mean, what we do know is the longer we, it's delayed, the worse it's going to be. Uh, how bad it'll be, you can just guess.